Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome to my review of the 2024 LEGO Star Wars Darth Maul Sith Infiltrator. Given set number 7583 with 640 pieces, this set costs $70. Just initial impressions, this set definitely feels overpriced, but we'll discuss that more near the end of the video. I also gotta say, I think the box art on this set is horrendous, which is not helping me like it either. In my opinion, they should have toned down the pink or thrown it in space. It just clashes too much with the blue. Anyway, it does include an exclusive minifigure in Saw Gerrera, celebrating 25 years of LEGO Star Wars, and that is on top of the three normal minifigs in the set. Taking a glance at the back of the box, you can see that while it's not shown on the front, Darth Maul's speeder is included and will be able to be stored inside of the Sith Infiltrator. And finally opening up our box, we're gonna find seven numbered bags inside alongside a very normal instruction manual. Moving into our minifigs, we have our 25th anniversary Saw Gerrera minifig here. He has the base plate that says 25 years of Lego Star Wars and he displays very nicely on there. I think this darker green was probably the best color they had available to them. They did some really nice prints on the torso on the actual chest plate that they gave him, which kind of matches the print that's underneath on the torso to the point that it cuts off. And then there's a really nice print on the legs. However, there's been some questioning of how they did his prosthetic leg that Lego does have a prosthetic leg piece, but that one I think cuts off like around the knee, but really saw Guerrero's prosthetic leg, at least in the movie from the scenes that I could see, it really shows about the ankle and below. So I feel like that piece would have been an odd use here. The same argument and counter argument can be made for a dual molded leg. So I actually don't hate the single small print down there. I would have loved a, you know, side print maybe of that part. But overall, I think uh, this was very well executed for the torso and legs. Now, there is one real highlight to me, and that's they actually gave him the cloth cape with a print on it. I mean, what a fantastic detail to have there. Something that really adds to this figure and gives it that full level of detail that you would expect out of an anniversary figure like this. So I think they killed it with Saw Gerrera, and I think it's definitely something Thing that might tempt you to want to buy this set because it's such a good figure and it's a character that we've never had before. The young Anakin minifig in this set is perfect by Lego Star Wars standards. This is as good as it comes for a young Anakin with Lego Star Wars. They've got a couple of different facial expressions and overall it's just a nice figure that they've executed very well for a long time now. With the Qui-Gon Jinn minifigure, I think this is also one of the better versions of him that we've ever had, but it still has some shortcomings. The legs look faded. On the box, they don't look faded, but when you get it, the leg print is going to be faded. Now, it is great they did bring his poncho back. It was actually quite surprising to me given how cheap they've been in recent years that they actually went and brought this cloth piece back, but it looks great here. It definitely needed to be here, and it is here, which is fantastic. The only other thing you need to know about it is that they grossly misrepresent the color of it on their packaging. Classic Lego. Now, the print underneath that is pretty normal. Jedi robes, nothing crazy or spectacular, but they did a good job with it. So by historical standards, I think this Qui-Gon at least meets, if not exceeds, how Lego has done the Qui-Gon minifig in the past, although I would still love to see an upgraded leg print that isn't so faded looking. You know they got the money to do it. But the next figure, I don't think that can be said for. With Darth Maul, I think we're seeing a downgrade. Now, I think the robes look great. I think the horn piece on top looks great. It's still, to this day, is one of the best pieces that LEGO has ever introduced for Star Wars minifigs. It just looks so good on top there. But they did something that I didn't really see coming, and obviously Darth Maul didn't either because he has no pupils. It looks horrible without any pupils. This isn't the first figure that LEGO Star Wars has taken taken pupils away from. They did it with Palpatine in 2023, but in my opinion, this one looks way worse than Palpatine. I was pretty okay with it on Palpatine. This one, it just doesn't translate at all. Darth Maul with pupils looks so much cooler, so much more evil and more accurate, of course. So I just don't like the look without pupils. There are some people that like it. That's great for you. This is a perfect set for you. If you love Darth Maul with no pupils, you gotta buy this one because the other Darth Maul out there right now from the book has pupils. It honestly just makes him look like a zombie. I think that's the the best description of it. It's like zombie Darth Maul. And that's not what this is. It's Darth Maul from episode one, not Darth Maul taken over by night sister witchery magic. Like it just doesn't work because this look is kind of for zombies and he's not a zombie. On the whole, I'm pretty happy with the four figures in this set, except for Darth Maul's face. I just feel like there should always be more. For $70 for a set that feels overpriced, if you included a shimmy Skywalker and a Padme, all of a sudden, maybe it doesn't feel as overpriced as $70 because now you have six total figures, you know? But Lego Star Wars historically hasn't been doing that and so of course this set reflects that but 
you know, doesn't take away the desire to want more. Moving on to the builds in this set, Darth Maul's speeder is quite different than what we've seen in the past. I mean, it's similarly small to some of the other ones, but the color scheme of it is quite distinct, opting for a very tan colorway. Also a bit of gold there for the clip and silver for the handlebars. So it's quite different. And as far as I can tell, this is pretty accurate to what is actually in the movie or what the prop for the movie was. But just depending on where you look online, there are versions of this speeder that are gray and there are versions of them that are tan. And certainly Lego historically uh, now has done both. And we can remove Darth Maul's lightsaber. We'll need that again in a second, but he is able to sit on the speeder. Although if you don't want him to fall off, you will actually have to attach his hands to the handlebars. So there it is with the minifig attached on there. I'm pretty indifferent about the design. It's nothing over the top. It's simple, gets the job done. And now this is where our Sith Infiltrator begins to come into play. Order of operations kind of matters here because you can't pull these pieces out before you lift this top hatch up. There's a little yellow light there, which is kind of cool, but you can open all four of those pieces to get very nice interior access. So bringing Darth Maul and his speeder in, you can just guide him right in there and he'll fall right into the slot that is made for him. It works pretty well. He fits in nicely. There's ample room for him. And surprisingly, there's also room for his lightsaber with those clips there. Get one on and the second one there. So I was pleasantly surprised that they were still able to include room for his lightsaber. I thought that was something that with this smaller scale Sith Infiltrator might have been thrown out the window. We do have one of the pretty standard printed Lego Star Wars control panels in there as well, which is solid detail. I think they did a pretty nice job with the piloting area for Darth Maul. It serves a few functions with what feels like no compromises. Now to close everything back up with him in there, you can see it might be a little tight on his head, but he does fit just fine. And that brings us to my first big complaint about this build. This print design is excellent for the top of the Sith Infiltrator. I love this. However, what is going on? The dark gray does not match the dark gray of the brick. There's absolutely no excuse for this because this is in 2007 and the gray of the print matches the gray of the brick. It's unacceptable for a product that costs more than twice as much retail as that 2007 set to be worse in this way. It just doesn't make sense. I wouldn't say it's the most noticeable thing in the world. I still think the design of this is excellent and for kids, I suppose it doesn't matter, but for collectors, which a good portion of the purchases on this set will be, it does matter and it looks like crap and again, you know, it was better 15 years ago. Why does it have to be worse now? Small rant aside, I do really like some of the design work up here with these translucent red pieces that really make this Sith Infiltrator look a bit intimidating. I also really like the tiling work at the back here using four different size tiles to completely tile off this plate area. Actually, as I look at it more, this entire back section is completely studless on the top. There's some studs showing out the back and on the wings, but this top side here, completely studless. When it comes to the wings, I think they're pretty well designed with some nice part usage using the ingot piece and the skate piece there. So that looks cool, but they actually can open up pretty easily there. It's super easy to do. And with the wings open, I think this thing looks pretty good. They do a great job of trying to capture the curvature that they have. So pretty impressed with them overall. There's also some really nice sloping work done and some mechanical stuff worked into the design that just looks really nice at this back section of the Sith Infiltrator. I think the back section of this thing outside of the print color there is really good. I can't quite say the same thing for how I think this front section on the Sith Infiltrator works. And before I get into what I think is particularly bad about it, I'll say what I do like about it. And that's the color blocking. I think they have blocked up the colors on the Sith Infiltrator almost perfectly at this scale. If you look at it compared to a shot of it in universe, this thing does a really good job of switching between light gray and dark gray where and when it needs to. That is an unquestionable highlight of this build to me. I think it just does a really good job of being as color accurate as it possibly can. The big low light on the build to me though has to be the ridge in front of the cockpit. It's just way too tall where it doesn't need to be for the design. It really shouldn't get up as high as it does until much further back. Like it really should top out where these cheese slopes top out, but unfortunately it goes a couple of plates higher and I just think it looks bad. And that seems to be most people's complaint with the design is that this part just looks weird. The silver lining in this is that it looks bad, but at least for the right reason. It's done for the functionality of having the probe droids inside for or Darth Maul. And so, yeah, it's nice to have that function. You got to have that. And so it's got to be done. It just unfortunately makes the top side of the Sith Infiltrator not look so great. Also, the inside of that doesn't look so great with the green and pink, but I'll let that go. There's actually a really neat mechanism on the bottom of the Sith Infiltrator that allows you to release these probe droids. All you have to do is slightly push this piece up and that little dark red tile moves slightly out of the way, which allows the probe droids to force the hatch to open. And so they can all fall out of the Sith Infiltrator, which 
which kind of makes it feel more like a bombing function than the probe droids being released. But this is a really cool play feature. Like they did a really good job with it. As I was building it, it was really cool to see this function come together. And because of the rubber piece that pushes up against it, it's immediately forced back into the locked position. So when you push the hatch up to close it, it locks back in place very easily. It's a really cool function. It's just unfortunate that it has the side effect of making the top side of the Sith Infiltrator look not so great. The next play feature can be activated by pressing down on either of these pieces here, either both at the same time or one at a time because they're on individual hinges. So if you just push one, there goes one spring-loaded shooter and there goes the other. This is the perfect way to integrate spring-loaded shooters. It doesn't take away from any of the exterior design and it's hidden far enough underneath the Sith Infiltrator that you literally can't see them unless you're really trying to find them. So this is obviously a great way to incorporate a play feature without having to take away from the design of a set, unlike the probe droid design. Oh, and last thing before I talk about the landing gear, there's kind of an Easter egg on this set. There's aviation lights. On the right side, we have a green one by one plate. And on the left side, we have a red one by one plate. And that's how airplane lights work. Just something interesting that I noticed. Now, let's talk about that landing gear. It seemed like it was gonna be pretty good landing gear. It's very easy to fold into the body of the ship when you wanna have it flying around. And if you maybe make a stand for this ship, then the bad function of the landing gear won't matter. Now, I suppose functionally it works the way it's intended. Like it folds in, it's strong, it doesn't fold under pressure. It actually in some ways is really good landing gear, but my real issue with it is that it's not tall enough. And so the Sith Infiltrator actually leans forward. And I think that looks really bad for display. I couldn't find anything to tell me whether the Sith Infiltrator in universe actually tilts forward when it's landed or not. If it's accurate, I'd give it that. I just don't know if it is, but I'm gonna assume it's not because it feels like it's just a side effect of of the design and I just don't like it. It just looks really weird to me angled forward towards the ground, especially if you compare it to an older Lego Sith Infiltrator. I have the one from 2007 here. It's landing gear structurally is not as good. It can be pushed down and broken down kind of easily, but having it sit flat looks way nicer than having it not sit flat in my opinion. I've shown you everything you need to see on this set, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so should you buy the 2024 Sith Infiltrator for $70? I think not. I just do not see $70 of value in this set. 640 pieces might point you in that direction, but when you think about the fact that in 2007, the entire wing was made with one piece and this is made with like eight or 10 each wing, yeah, that's part inflation. It's gonna happen. So price per piece is completely irrelevant here. I just do not see $70 in this. 55, 60 maybe would be pushing it. If you watch this review and you liked what you see or don't see if you're Darth Maul, then I would still recommend waiting for a sale, but I suppose it is your money, do what you want with it. I think this build did try to improve on past Sith Infiltrators in a lot of ways, but I also think it still has some unfortunate flaws and unfortunately so do the minifigures in an era where Lego is making more money than ever. So I'm going eight out of 10 on this one. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and you can check out more 2024 set reviews on the end screen now.